I don't think Jeffrey Grosbach needs much of an introduction. You've probably all heard his voice. If you haven't, shame on you. Uh, but now you can see his face. So, Jeffrey, take us away. Exactly what Zed Shaw does. 
I mentioned this to Gary Bernard, and he said he, he'll take it even a step further. Uh, he says restarting a coding project with a better, better understanding of the problem should not be a rare event that only happens accidentally. It should be a regular part of your workflow. You should have that built in for the beginning. You should uh, do that regularly. And this is, you know, we like, like to talk about refactoring a lot, taking some code, making it better. This is actually not that at all. This is actually defeating whatever code you've written. And, you know, we're often so uh, attached to the code that we've written because it was so hard to write and it was, uh, it was took many hours to, to put it together. And yet we don't, you know, I, I've learned to realize that that isn't the most valuable thing that I do in the day is the lines of code that, that result from whatever I do. It's those ideas and often those ideas can be better expressed by starting over completely deleting a prototype. I thought this was, you know, a great idea in itself until I realized this is actually straight in the, uh, the Mythical Man Month. He has a whole chapter on this. He says, in most projects, the first system is barely usable and inevitably you have to start over again and it's going to smart, but it will be smarter. And so he, he says, well, let's put this into our workflow. Let's plan to throw one away. Use the first, first pass through as a learning experience, learn about the problem, learn how to implement solutions, and then start over from scratch with those new ideas. Now, we don't like the idea of, uh, you know, we've heard about the big rewrite and how, uh, how horrible that can be and, and that things uh, are often very difficult to rewrite once you have a whole lot of code. And so, in fact, this is not about the, the big rewrite. It's about doing it in small steps along the way. Uh, for a while, I lived in Seattle. Will Shipley, a uh, coder and businessman that I... Uh, Iron have learned a lot from some of the things he said. He says, don't write code until you know what you're doing. But that doesn't always involve just kind of sitting there and thinking about it. Maybe it's actually writing code is the process by which we, we learn to think through things. But that doesn't mean that that code is what we should end up using. Uh, maybe it's that process. We, we write a small project and then we, we throw that out. So he too uses this idea of kind of a disposable prototype. He said that when he's writing a, a larger application, he'll have a dozen small <coughs> programs that he starts completely separate from the main code base just to figure out API or a, a UI issue or how to write an algorithm to solve a specific thing. It kind of insulates him from all the other things that can go wrong. Oh, I need to upgrade this thing to get that thing to work, and then oh, how do these things work together, and how do I you know bundle these things? Uh, isolated small projects can often be be useful in that part of the creative process. Personally, I've uh, put that into practice by uh, starting a blog where I do a different design for every blog post. Now, this does take quite a lot of work, but my goal at the beginning was to get better at front-end design, uh, but also HTML markup, CSS, JavaScript, putting all those, those kinds of things together. And I found that having these small projects where I was basically starting from scratch really helped me to not only learn specific things that I wanted to learn, but also helped me uh, figure out things that I didn't expect that I was going to learn. And, uh, and that's ended up being a valuable thing to, uh, to accidentally learn things. Try something that has no immediate benefit or application, but uh, just experimentation and learning in general has been really valuable. Not to mention fun. I mean, it's, uh, it's fun to be able to put something together that doesn't have specific requirements at the end and is a small enough project that you can finish it in a day or two and you get that thrill of finishing a project, learning something, stumbling on something that you didn't uh, even intend to learn, and, and then moving on to the next thing. 
some of those have included uh, different oddities of CSS or uh, WebKit animations, uh, masks, all kinds of stuff uh, has been pretty interesting. Some of it, you know, I haven't actually used it in a, uh, an otherwise profitable project yet, but uh, it's still been useful to learn. Another thing that's helped uh, by doing small projects on my own is to learn to critique, to criticize my own work and, and learn from it. And that's definitely something that creative artists will do. That's often hard for us because in order to be a programmer, you have to be quite an optimist. And again, Fred Brooks talks about this. He says that program all programmers are necessarily optimists because uh, you know maybe it attracts people who like like a happy ending. Uh, but we kind of have to have that continual optimism of well, you know, this I fixed the last bug, I've implemented it correctly, my test suite will pass because I'm supposed to go green, and, uh, and, and everything works out. But, of course, it doesn't often work out, and, um, and I think that sometimes, you know, I know for myself, sometimes keeps me from looking at my own, own work, critiquing it, or even accepting other people's critique of my work, um, which is actually really hard to do on the internet, especially because uh, you know we end up being defensive of, of our code and, and thinking that, well, I, I put a lot of work into this, and uh, why, why, are, why would anyone criticize it or say that it should be done differently? Uh, the internet, as we know, tends to kind of amplify any kind of critique or criticism and, and uh, makes it hard to receive. Uh, there, there are a lot of people who are appear very mean on the internet, but turn out to be very nice in person. I tried to think of someone from Seattle who fit that description, but was unable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, watching and cr watching people write code in person, and then either, either giving or receiving critique, of course, with a little bit of diplomacy. One of the places that I saw this happen really well was uh, an event in Australia called Rails Camp. They've recreated this uh, other countries a little bit. Uh, basically, it's like a food camp where they just rent out, well, for that, they rent out the uh, summer camp for a weekend, and there's no uh, scheduled talks. Uh, you just go, you, you uh, maybe there are some presentations, maybe there's just a room full of people writing code, and you see what other people are doing, and, uh, and it's a great way to go and actually watch people write code and learn things that way. One session there were uh, two guys, Miles Byrne and Tim Lucas, who uh, talked about, who, who took some existing code and, as, as a session with 20 people watching on or something, explained how they would improve this, this bit of code, and the original author was actually right there in the room, and it was you know, a little hard for him to not be defensive of his code, but it uh, turns out you know, these guys were brilliant programmers and had a lot of good things to say. For example, here was one where they uh, looked at where he had just printed out a message to the screen and then called exit to show that the program didn't have enough information to go on, and they realized, well, there, you know, there are a couple things that, that could be better it could, if you're Printing out something that's an error, well, that should go to standard error, not the standard out. And if you're going to quit because the program couldn't complete, well, then you should exit with non-zero, not exit with one. And if you're going to do all that, well, you may as well just call it abort instead of building that all up yourself. Um, so really just, you know, straightforward, useful, practical critique. Uh, and, and this is something that's, that's really built into uh, the way graphic artists often work. <coughs> But, uh, but as programmers, especially with open source projects, you kind of have to go out of your way to, uh, to seek that and to get, to get that kind of uh, positive, useful learning kind of critique. And again, it often works best if you do that in person. Uh, another thing that I have learned um, where I'm trying to just think about my creative process is that creative time is not wasted time. Uh, 
fortunately, being running uh, my own business and having some, some flexibility uh, for a couple months, I decided I would start every day uh, going to my favorite French pastry shop uh, up in Ballard called Honoré Bakery, which is unfortunately closed for the next two weeks because they're on vacation. But, um, and, you know, having an espresso and eating a, a French pastry and writing down in a little sketchbook some, you know, ideas about the different programs I was trying to write or, or things to solve or, you know, screencast to make. And after a couple of weeks of that, I thought, well, you know, maybe this is kind of a, a waste of time. I should be, you know, just sitting at the computer working hard on things instead of just uh, being away from the computer and just having undirected thought without any specific goal in mind. But then I went through and I listed all the things that I had solved, thought of, or, or good ideas I'd come up with by having that time. And, you know, there's a whole list of things uh, that had been useful to me personally or more profitable for the business or uh, overall worthwhile. And I realized that's, you know, that's a, it's, it's hard to do to have this completely undirected time where, uh, you know, just give yourself 30 minutes, an, an hour to, uh, to have really nothing on the agenda and uh, think, you know, and, and, you know, this isn't, uh, you know, trying to sketch things upside down or, or things like that. It's, uh, it's just kind of open-ended thinking time and that turned out to be hugely useful. Um, other things that have been useful for me in that context uh, have been just to generally think about, well, what, uh, um, you know, I guess if this was Six Sigma, I would find some way to measure this, but um, <laughs> thinking, you know, what are the things that I have done in the rest of my life, and what uh, have those in increased my programming creativity, or have they made it harder? Um, John Barnett talked about these the general stress of, of programming that, that, that leaked, leaked into the rest of his life. I guess I was trying to kind of do the opposite of how could I structure the rest of my life so that it would improve my programming or improve my ability to come up with ideas and, and, and be fresh and uh, think through some of these things. Definitely found that exercise has been huge. Um, actually, two days ago, right before this uh, conference, did a big bike race around Mount Rainier. Um, strangely with that, uh, in the, doing exercise in the morning has been huge. Uh, there are physical things that go on of endorphins and, and clear thinking that I find I get if I even do 30 minutes of exercise in the morning. Uh, and then I get that benefit all day long. If I exercise in the afternoon or evening, then I kind of waste that on sleep. Which is, which is often a good time to come up with uh, good ideas too, you know, kind of uh, with the, the subconscious, but, um, but doing, you know, doing some kind of little exercise in the morning has really helped me to think a lot more clearly. Another thing has been um, laughing. I've been fortunate to hire someone in the last couple months who laughs at 100% of my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and occasionally laughs at me when I have not said anything funny. So uh, that, that actually has, has been helpful. And, uh, you know, when we talk, as Ruby programmers, we like this idea of, of uh, Ruby bringing us happiness. Well, is that reflected in our, our mood and our, uh, the other kinds of things that we do in life? Does that leak out into the, to making us happy through, when we're not coding? Or, or could happiness in other parts of life make our, our coding better and uh, happier in that way, too. So overall, what I'd like you to take from this is just uh, just thinking of yourself as, you know, you are a creative individual. Uh, that doesn't mean to get all fuzzy of, of uh, you know, thinking of yourself as an artist, but as, as a, you know, as a computer programmer, you're coming up with ideas, you're building things from nothing. And these are our creative endeavors. Think about the, uh, the process of doing that, the way that you could uh, um, improve that with prototypes that you may throw away, with critique from other people, with parts of your daily life that could, uh, could improve uh, the, your mood, your environment, or 
uh, the other ways that you write programs. Now, because this is Seattle, we probably should end this by uh, putting the uh, laptop on flame on the stage, but I don't think that's allowed in the, uh, the building contract. So, uh, thanks again. Uh, it's been a great conference, and uh, look forward to uh, talking to uh, to you later in the, the evening and whatever else we end up doing uh, this evening. So, thank you.